Okay, in this video, I'm going to use the cross or go over the crossover rule and how we use it to name ionic formulas. Okay, and we're going to use, we have the formula name, we're going to have the ionic names, and then we're going to come up with the ionic formulas. All right, before we do that, let's just make sure that everybody has their handy dandy periodic table out. You need to have your periodic table out and you need to have the charges written on your periodic table, or you don't need to, but you need to be able to know that group one forms plus one. Group two forms plus two, group three for the metals forms plus three charges, and then we have minus one, minus two, and minus three for the groups 15, 16, and 17. And then you need to be aware of the um, transition metals, and then you need to be aware of the polyatomic ions, okay? So either you've memorized the polyatomic ions or your teacher is going to give you a list of them, and we're going to use those when we name our compounds. All right, I'm going to do this all over Keynote, and this is the way I recommend you do this. Okay, we have beryllium fluoride. I'm going to write down, I'm going to look on the periodic table and write down the charge on each of those. Beryllium is a plus two. I look on my, excuse me, beryllium is a group two uh, element. I look on my periodic table, it's plus two. Fluoride is group 17. It is a minus one charge. All right, now... We write those down. Please just write them down. And then the next thing I do is I just write down the symbols for the elements. So I write down the symbol for beryllium. I maybe leave a little space and then I write down the symbol for fluorine. Okay? And so I have my BEF. That's my basic kind of structure, what I'm going to start with. And then I'm going to cross over. I'm going to apply the cross over rule. I'm going to take the two from the beryllium and I'm going to put it onto the fluorine. I'm going to take the one from the fluorine and I'm going to put it on the beryllium. So that is the ke chemical formula, BE1F2. Now we don't write down the one. So the final formula is just going to BEF2 or it's going to be BEF2. All right, that is the formula, that is a crossover rule. Write down the charges, cross them over, and write down the final formula. Now, let's just confirm that that actually works. We have one BE, one beryllium, and two fluorines. The overall charge on this ionic unit must be zero. So let's just check. One BE, that's a plus two, and two fluorines, each of which is a minus one. If we add all the charges up, we get plus two, plus two minus ones, and that equals zero. Okay? That is the way that that works. Let's do another one. This one, sodium nitrate, you can see that it has a polyatomic ion. But we're going to do the same thing. Sodium is plus one. Remember or look up nitrate is minus one. I'm going to write down the symbols for sodium and nitrate. It's NaNO3. Now this one is pretty easy. Both the sodium is plus one and the nitrate is minus one. So they both have ones in them. Therefore, I know that the formula is just going to be 1 to 1. Even if this was 2 and 2, or plus 3 and minus 3, or plus 4 and minus 4, then we know that this formula is going to reduce to its lowest ratio, which is 1 to 1. So we just write down sodium and nitrate. Okay, that one's pretty easy. Okay, one more. Chromium 2 phosphate. But I'm going to do the same thing over again. These are all ionics. Chromium is plus 2. Phosphate is minus 3. I'm going to write down the chemical symbols, the element symbols for chromium and for phosphate, and I'm going to apply the crossover rule. I'm going to take the 2 from the chromium and put it on the phosphate. I'm going to take the 3 from the phosphate and put it on the chromium, and therefore we know that the formula is going to look like that. Now, we have to make a little adjustment because we have four, excuse me, we have two phosphates. So when we write the chemical formula, we have to put the phosphate in parentheses because the two applies to the whole PO4 polyatomic ion. So we write it, and it looks like that, CR3, PO4, 2. And we can apply the math again just to check. Chromium is plus two. We have three of those, so that's going to be six. And we have three, two phosphates. Each of those is minus three. And six plus minus six equals zero. All right, you can see that I did the same thing 
over and over again. And I would do that. Write down the charges, cross them over, excuse me, write down the charges, write down the element symbols or the polyatomic symbols, and then cross them over. Thank you.